Good morning from Ponce. I'm Tim and this is Tim B at C. We're trying out my brand new camera. <laughs> yep, as things go, uh, conditions uh, don't always make your equipment last forever. So it always seems like it, every so often I have to keep buying new equipment. So trying out the new camera, hopefully you guys like it. The good news is that I've had problems before where I haven't been able to keep things in frame and this one's supposed to help out with that with the front screen. So sure you don't care about that the thing that we're doing today is we our barge right here was going through an inspection the inspection got done and uh pretty soon the uh, pilot will come over because we don't usually come in here and i don't know how all my trips in here so what we're going to do is we're going to take that barge and we're going to head out to sea and head over to guayania and you guys are going to come along with us so strap in here we go Before we get going, I need to apologize uh, with any kind of new equipment, things happen and you're not used to things and my cameras, I'm not used to this camera, I have it zoomed in and I move a lot, so if you get seasick, I'm really sorry, hang in there. Okay, so here's our chief, he's ready to let the lines go, Luke's going back to the doghouse, got the engines warmed up, we've checked them, got the steering on, pilot boat's over there, but I, th I think the pilot this boat is still waiting to take the pilot off on the incoming ship because we're we still got a ways to go you can hear luke starting the uh winch motor now he's going to pay off the soft line in he'll probably bend that bow in and uh chief will throw that over if i was a good guy i'd go down there and pull it up on deck for him but uh i know he can do this all himself how you feeling this morning chief you ready to go <laughs> luke has moved to the wheelhouse and he's gonna squeeze this over and if you're wondering why this couldn't be done before, with a stern line, it would keep us from popping over. So this wouldn't be a option had we uh, not taken the stern line in. You want to go go down there, Chief? Uh, I can't. Just because you can hop hop on the on the Yokohama. All right, the Chief's aboard. been doing this for a while now and uh, we still get the same comments people say why is the chief doing deck work well down here we've got such a solid team that uh, they seem to work better with a crew of four than a crew of five so the chief acts as a deck and ear half deck hand half uh, engineer and he gets a little extra stipend for that now you can see right here Luke is uh, walking us off. And remember the walking is where he's doing a, a right hand twist with the rudder off to the left. And that's lifting us right off the dock. Let me show you how that's working over here. See, as he does that, the stern is over there, but it's really pushed the bow over. People say, why don't you have a bow thruster? Well, if you have twin screw and you got a capable man on the uh, helm like uh, Luke here, you don't even need that. So away we go. Okay, our tankerman's up there. He's ready to go. Now, I just got a comment the other day that kind of surprised me. Somebody said, oh, I don't see any of you guys wearing life jackets. If you notice, the guys on the 01 deck, that's like right here, like me and Luke, we're not required to wear life jackets because we're not down on deck. But if you notice our tankerman up there, good morning. He's got a life jacket on and uh, so does uh, the chief. And now Luke's gonna bring it alongside. 
Luke, do you want to put up a headline just to hold us in place, or you just want to hold it? I think the That's wind will hold us in place, right? Yeah, all right, good deal. <laughs> So Luke's walking it over a little bit. He'll come over and he's gonna get the stern over and then he'll go back to the stern controls and we'll start making up on the stern. So you can see why we have these big tires here. In the Porta Ponce, uh, we don't have any swell in here at all. This is real nice. See, this is the first time with this company that I've been in here and it's real, real nice in here. I wish we were staying here for a while. But uh, anyway, Luke's flattening it out. The stern's coming over. And uh, he's going back to the after controls, and uh, he'll get us over there. And then the chief will send up the soft line, and we'll pull over their pennant and we'll shackle into it. going over uh, what how the tankerman wants to receive this does he want to do it separately or all together and this tankerman is uh, full of muscle so he's going to take up everything all in one shot so the chief is sending up the shackle on the end of the soft line and this is the shackle that he'll he'll shackle into uh, his pennant and we'll be able to pull it over now they're paying out some of the soft line because they've got to send that line all the way up and all the way around to pick up the pennant. And what happens, some people say, why don't you use the, that uh, Amstel Blue on everything? And uh, the reason why is that it's not, it, it buries itself where the wire won't bury itself. You can see what happened here, it got buried in there. So he has to give it a good pull and if he can't, he'll put it up. Right now he's going to put it on the cleat. And by putting it on the cleat, that will hold it and pull it out from where it's buried itself on the line. Now Luke's going to go and, and wind it out. There you go, you can see it popped out there. Now before it gets out of hand, the chief will pull up the slack. This is the first time that we've got on here with this hit, so uh, you say, how did you get it buried so well? Well, that's not really a question for us, it's a question for uh, the other crew. I see how they wrapped it across this way. They do that, and that's what we usually like to do as much as often as we can, because when you go back and forth like that, it won't get buried. Unfortunately, you can't really do that with a strain on it, so uh, we do that when we can, and when we can't, we have to uh, tie it off to the cleat like the Jeep did. Somebody in the comments gave me a really good education a while ago about the, this, this type of uh, line, the synthetic line we use, we call Amstel Blue. And uh, he was telling me that uh, this is, in fact, I, I, I've been saying that it's like Kevlar, and I guess it's Kevlar light, but it's not, it's a completely different compound than Kevlar. And that uh, this, this stuff is actually what um, many of us have heard of Dyneema. We use Dyneema in different things, but this is a, a special Dyneema variant or type or whatever. Pulls the soft line tight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to send it up to him and then I'm going to... Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I got you, I got you. I'm sorry, man. I'll, I'll mind my own business. <laughs> Chief's got a plan. Alright, so while we're here, we're floating off. And so Luke is uh, maneuvering us back into position again. See the sargasso weed is blowing into the harbor here. Beautiful clear water here, Ponce. This the sargasso weed has been something that has been plaguing the Caribbean and uh, Gulf Coast for quite a while with uh, the ocean temperatures warming. So now we're waiting on the tankerman, and the tankerman has gone to probably get a heaving line to throw down to the chief. 
And if I were Luke right now, I'd be thinking to myself, why doesn't he have that thing ready? That <laughs> is what I'm thinking. <laughs> See that? I read your mind. <laughs> This Navy ship apparently came in a while ago, and I, the rumor is, I don't know this for fact, I have to ask the pilot, but I think it's coming in here to be decommissioned, either to be worked on or decommissioned, but they have a small contingent of people, so it doesn't seem to be, if they are crewed up, we haven't seen, we've just seen a couple people doing calisthenics in the morning, but uh, I got a feeling they're either here to do repairs or uh, decommission, I'm not really sure. but. When I figure that out, I'll get back to you. All right, so the tanker man's got the heaving line. Come over here and get a better shot for you. Hopefully you guys are liking this camera. It has a function on here that I believe I'm using that uh, is supposed to make things much steadier so that there shouldn't be so much bouncing around when I'm holding the camera in my hand. It keeps the, or, you know, it reduces it, I should say. And uh, I think it, uh, I think I have it set. I'm still learning about this, but I to try to keep the horizon level all the time, regardless of the angle of my hand. So now, you can just see the tankerman's head sticking up there. He's shackling this in, and he is going to have to take off this other line. He's got another, he's got another chain up there, and that chain is going to have to come out because he's going to have to bring his line over the top of that stanchion and around. So, Part of the duties on deck is that, you know, everybody works as a team and nobody should get mad about somebody saying, oh, don't tell me how to do my job. It's not really not an effective way of, to, to work. If somebody sees something that somebody else has not seen, we, we point it out to them. So before we heave in on it, we're going to have to uh, address that. In fact, I'm going to tell Luke so Luke knows. Luke, just to give you a heads up, he still has one chain and he's going to have to take that off so he can lift everything over the stanchions, just to let you know. One of the things that I uh, really enjoy about the crew that I work Okay, now, now you see, he, he just figured it out. Instead of doing that, he just lift, pulled, it, pulled it out and pulled it around. So he must have heard, he must have figured out exactly what I was saying. And now he's going to bring that around and he'll bring it around to the other side where uh, his pennant is made up. But one of the things I really like about the crew I have and, uh, and many of the crews that I've worked with, but uh, you know, everyone's got their own style of management and uh, leadership. And one thing that I really try to tell people is do not get upset if I tell you something that, you know, I, I never want to hear from somebody, well, does Tim think I don't know that? No, it's not that. It's that if, if, if we all talk about what's going through our mind, the, uh, we reduce the odds of something bad happening. So there are a lot of things that I will tell Luke. I'll say, all right, Luke, so uh, when I'd come up here, I'd turn at this point. I'm sure Luke knows all that. But at the same time, part of the job, my job as captain and his job of mate is for me to get him to where I am and uh, and vice versa, you know? So we, we try to t tell everybody what we see, even if it's something that's relatively obvious, you know? We don't want people, we don't want people's get, people getting their feelings hurt and thinking, oh, how does he think I don't know that? Well, I'm assuming that you know everything, but I don't want to make any assumptions, so just in case, we cover everything. You know, it's funny, uh, I just spent a week working in New York, and uh, one of the, we had a, a newer deckhand on the boat up there, and uh, I was explaining to him that when we talk on the radio, uh, there's a reason why you'll hear people like in the military, especially like the Navy, the Navy will give commands, and uh, the commands are, when they're heard, they're repeated back to them. So, perhaps the officer of the deck might tell the helmsman, come five degrees right. The helmsman would say, aye, five degrees right. And they repeat that. And that sounds kind of weird. And you know what? 99% of the time, maybe 95% of the time, it's really unneeded. But on the times that it is, it's misinterpreted, it's really good to have that back. And uh, in our case, we're not launching missiles and we're not shooting down planes and stuff like that. So it's not quite as serious as it is in the military, but it is important to know that when I send out a command, the person receives it. Um, and, and I do the same. So in other words, I might tell the chief, I might say, 
chief how we look uh, or chief are we like five feet off the dock and the chief might say yes we are or the chief might say we're five feet off the dock and I'll respond even just saying okay at least he understands that I got the last message from him and all of that has to do you know it all comes back to like I say people's management styles and I'm not saying you know there's there's everyone has their own different management style and uh, what has worked for me very well is is very clear and a lot of communication and uh, if you work with somebody that doesn't like to be told what to do and that sort of stuff those are people that probably uh, they, they might be happier on another boat than ours uh, we all work together and you know what to be completely honest I've been doing this for a while and uh, there are many times that the deckhand will point out something, that the engineer will point out something, or that Luke will point out something to me, and I might have missed it. Or, you know, I might have known about it, but I'm thinking about something else, and uh, it really helps. And so I think that for me, in the style of management that I like, or leadership, it really is important for us to everybody be open, everybody says everything, and nobody gets their feelings hurt. We sit around the galley and make fun of each other, and that's when we are looking to hurt each other's feelings. <laughs> being silly for uh <laughs> for those that are not in the industry oh, oh looks like so the pilot we have flying handlers and i'm here all right we're just making up to the wire and then we'll be uh, ready to get out of here so that's the pilot the pilot says he's got line handlers and he's here and we're ready to go and uh so I think what that means is that he's gonna he's probably on the pilot boat or either that or the pilot boat's coming over I'm not really sure but uh, at any rate we've worked with him so long and this is a relatively easy harbor he's really here more as a overlook to tell us you know answer any questions and uh, make sure everything goes well for us but I think he, he's so familiar with us and the, the way we do things that he's confident that we can pull this thing off the dock ourselves without him but I could be wrong maybe he'll maybe the pilot boat's bringing him over and he'll he'll come on and I'll be really foolish <laughs> but uh like I say we love our pilots we got two pilots that we use all the time down here and they're awesome and they're they're really an extension of our crew you know what this thing this camera I'm looking at at this thing and it, it looks like we have a uh, I guess it has a zoom function on it I think that I'm zoomed in I wonder if I can I don't think that I can I think I have to shut the camera off to change the zoom level okay so right now what Luke is just trying to hold us in position you might see the wind has been blowing him off the whole time but he's holding in position while the tanker man is working by himself his mate is, or his uh, other tanker man is probably off watch sleeping right now so Luke's holding and uh, once again if I were Luke right now I would be this, this is the hardest part of the job for me Luke's got a lot more patience than I have but uh, this waiting while you're holding position, there's no line that he's up against. We could throw a line and hold the line up here, but we knew that we were going to be all right, so Luke can do it. But this, what might be two minutes, feels like two hours when you're trying to hold the boat here. And he can't, really, okay, now, now the line's coming off. That means that the tankman's throwing everything over. So now that the chief did put the line around the cleat like I was hoping he would, so apparently he had that in a plan. I just didn't, the order of his plan was different than mine. And once again, that gets back to a different management style. I am not the, uh, I don't, I don't subscribe to the uh, my way or the highway and you gotta, there's only one way to do things. No, what you, if you get to do it and it's safe and the thing gets done, whether he does that when he puts the line up or does it afterwards, doesn't really matter to me. Um, he has a way to do it. I respect that, and uh, I think that he uh, likes that I let him do what he wants to do to get the job done safely. So, all seems to work out well. So right now, the tankerman has probably got the line all the way over. He's thrown it over. He's made it up to his pennant. So he's probably starting to release the pennant. Now, I don't know if you can see it or not, but right, right. Oh, now you can see. There you go. I can just see everything going flying into the water. So now once it's there, he should give the call on the radio to Luke, and Luke is going to start heaving up. What Luke has to be cognizant of is, as that heavy bridle comes over this way, there's going to be a lot of pressure pulling the stern over, and he doesn't want to get under the rake over here. 
So the chief has positioned the chafe gear around the winch. You can see it. Maybe I get a better look of it here. But you can see the white canvas looking thing that's around the uh, cleat and that's to protect the uh, Dyneema or Dam Still Blue. I'm going to come around the other side. We can see this a little better this way. So now the line's coming up. You can see here comes the shackle. That up and then it brings it over and we can just shoot right between there just trying to get a best best vantage point for you there we go now the chief has to be very careful because as luke moves that wire could jump around so so uh luke is probably going to tell the chief to watch out until he's ready and then then the chief will come all the way around the winch to make that up <laughs> I think what, Luke, what Luke's doing now. <laughs> is I think that he's moving back so that we'll get the uh, we'll get the socket closer to our, the wire shackle. There he goes. Now he'll probably heave it up. I, I would imagine. stop and he moves it over okay she's got it lined up now what Luke has to do is Luke has to be cognizant not to drive the boat ahead because if he does he'll put the, the chief in a dangerous spot as long as he keeps back and if the wire goes anywhere it's going to come away from the chief so the chief is asking him to back up just a little bit backing up just a little bit and you can see once again nobody's feelings get hurt everybody communicates and everybody stays safe hoping you can see this right through the uh, through the hole of the suitcase drum so he puts the the nut on the end of the shackle here and there's a hole through the pin and through the nut and he lines those up and then he'll put a cotter pin in between there to make sure it won't roll off. Now he, you see what he did? He just looked up there and he looked at the wire to make sure that the wire wasn't in an angle that if the wire jumps it would catch him. Alright, that's a good job. Now he's cleaning the work area so that if the wire goes tight, it won't get that stuff and throw it and maim anybody. And the chief brings in, I mean, uh, Luke brings in the wire. By doing this, he's going to take tension off of the suitcase drum. Now he's loosening that up. Now the chief is going to go over and let that line go, and we will be made up, except we have to go and put a bow line up next. There we go. Chief's all done. So good job. Now the next thing we have to do is put a bow line up, and uh, I'm going to go up there and yell at Luke and tell him how much further we have to go. Or the chief actually might even do that. Luke, you want to go to that further one that we've been no normally going to, right? Right, right, right. So... Some people go to this one right here. I think we're gonna go to the next one, because the next one. Luke, we got we got one more to go ahead. And there's nothing wrong when you're back here, the the 
end of the tug is back and, it, and you can steer very well, but we don't have an assist today on purpose. We said we didn't need one. And so by making it up like this, he's gonna be able to walk the barge off the dock that much easier. Getting the wire over on the side there. We've got two uh, donuts over there, so he'll be able to pick up the donuts when it's time to go. That's good. So now we're lined up with our cleat. Tankerman's primed and ready. <laughs> Where's that super chief? <laughs> oh, the pilot is aboard. Captain Alex. I've been around for a while. You haven't noticed me. I've, I've been busy. <laughs> Do you want to say hi to my people? Hello. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. This is our favorite pilot. Well, one of our favorite one of them, one of them. I don't want to get the other one all upset. <laughs> but this guy's great. He's uh, he's here. I was saying that I didn't know if you were going to stay on the pilot boat or come with us, but we're always happy to see you here. Now the coming on board. All right. So the so the chief is unwrapping our uh, headline, and we're doing this so that that we'll have we'll use the wire as a stern line, the the soft line as a headline. We're gonna get off the dock into better water and then we'll let the headline go. Luke will flip around in front of the barge and start towing it off. And if we were gonna go a great distance, we'd put up a stern line. And, 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 and Luke might still wanna do that. Since he's doing the job, he gets the call whether he, he, he wants a stern line or not. And something that people don't realize is, you know what, let me put, focus it back here. When you do this, the stern line is really helping us more to do a what would be a left hand turn in other words if we're turning this way the stern would want to pop out so you bring the stern line straight across you don't bring it back the wire is going to be back there and that's going to be that's going to be luke you're in the perfect spot so the so 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 whether he needs it or not i got a feeling he 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 probably won't need it but but like i say that's his call and he i let him do whatever he's comfortable doing he'll make that decision All right, now the chief's gonna make this up on the bits. That's probably good right there. All right. And you watch how the chief makes this up. He doesn't keep his hands on the rope because obviously it's light right here, but you, you, you train the way you fight, right? So uh, if people that really grab a hold of the rope with their fingers end up losing fingers when the lines come tight. All right, Luke, you're all made off. So now what Luke's going to do, so, so what Luke's going to do is he, he's going to back up to try to maintain some of what we call a pinch. And, and if, he, if he just tightens up, the barge will come flat. But he wants a little bit of space back here in what we call the pinch. And that little angle is going to help him not only off the dock, but when he drives ahead, instead of having a big 400-foot barge on the side of him, that barge, part of it, will be brought over the center line when he drives ahead and balance the two so he doesn't have to use as much rudder. So right now he's backing, you can see the line is tight, the tire is compressing, the line's coming in, the, the wire's coming in, and everything's working out great. Now let me go talk to him and see if he wants it. Luke, if you want a stern line, you can have it, but I don't think you're gonna need it. It's up to you. The wind's coming off the dock and you're, you're gonna dump this thing right off the dock. But it's up to you. Okay, cool. All right, so Luke wants, that's too much pinch for him, so uh, Luke says put a couple feet of slack in here. See how, the, see how the chief does that? He's doing it like that, so if it flies out, it won't take his fingers with him. All right, so that's good enough. The chief wraps it up. All right, we're good. All right, I get with Captain Alex and uh, he and Luke will go upstairs. 
All right, so right now Luke is up, 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 up in the upper wheelhouse, and he's got this. He's got this job done just fine, so he's going to be fine. I'll take this off so you can see the shaft tacks and see what he's doing. And uh, I'm here with Captain Alex, and uh, both Captain Alex and I were both saying how. So we were both saying how uh, Luke is at the point where. He really doesn't need any uh, guidance at all. He's got this himself. So both of us are here just kind of in a super, we, we can supervise from down here. If we see something wrong or give him some pointers, we can do it from here. If we need to, we can go upstairs. It's not a big deal, but that's what we're doing. Now, because of the radio that we're using up there, we won't be able to hear Luke unless I turn this down. So now you can hear what Luke says because uh, the other way. You work your way forward. Just make sure that the bow isn't getting into anything up there. But if the stern falls off a little bit, that's good. So, so this. <laughs> so, so this is us right here. This is the track line from when they came before, and you can see we're going to come out here like this. Now. Captain Alex, I'm thinking that he probably wants to get on the wire right about here. Does that make sense, or would you do it further down? No, no, no. Once we pass, uh, we clear the corner of the jetty, yep. and, uh, and right by the breakwater, we can uh, get on the wire. Okay, very good. The only difference today is that the wind is from the south. All right. And that's due to our friend Hurricane yes. Lee. Yes, that's right. We got the hurricane on the other side. Oops, I thought us. You got me, Luke? What was that, Tim? Um, yeah, Alex and I were just saying that once you come off the dock and you get out by the breakwater, just outside of the breakwater, anywhere you're comfortable in there, go ahead and we can do it right then and put it right on the wire. Okay. And as I was saying before, uh, Luke probably had the same plan, but, you know, uh, our management style over here is that everyone talks about everything, so we're all on the same, we're all on the same page. So that's the chief talking to him right there. And the reason why I'm not using the other radio is this radio is tied into the one upstairs. So if we just use that, we won't be able to hear what Luke says to him. And you can hear Luke. The line is uh, tight, just the line that I need to get off the next, so I need you to stir off, stop, and maybe give her a moment of turn. Come on, deal. All right, I'm all stopped. Damn. So right here, you can see he's got the rudder hard to starboard. Engines are both stopped and neutral. Alright, give her a bump of stern, please. There you go. See, now that port engine's coming to stern. And he's doing the port engine so that the bow is less likely to pull over. You know what I'm going to do? I think that this would probably be better if I gave you a look from up above. So I'm going to take you upstairs. See how we have the ladder off the the barge the line is there but the ladder's just off of it and that's because sometimes the the barge and the tug will shift a little bit and we don't want in during that shifting period we don't want that to uh mangle the ladder So there's Luke there. <laughs> so uh, there's the tankerman. So you can see this is some uh, Russian oligarchs luxury yacht up there. And I got a feeling, although I don't know, I got to ask Alex, but I got a feeling it's been seized. I'm not sure what the deal is with that. But anyway, that's there. So you can see Luke is bringing the bow out. I'm going to give you this angle here and go and keep an eye on things with Captain Alex. All right, you're on your own.
Foreman standing by. He knows the next move is going to be letting that bow line go. We've got the chief back on board. What we're doing, what Luke's doing now, is he's putting the bow into the wind. That way, he won't have to pull. The, he won't have to turn the barge around to get out of here. He'll just come out in front of it and drive away. The pilot boat's coming to retrieve the pilot. I talked to Alex about that big mega yacht over there and apparently this was a Russian oligarch that in a brilliant move not only did he uh, get his American citizenship somehow but he's an American citizen and that kept him from uh, getting his yacht seized but uh, I guess the rumor is that he won that yacht in a poker game Can you imagine that unbelievable isn't it all right, so Luke's getting this all, you can see we're getting a little wiggled around here. Captain Alex is getting ready. And you can see what he's doing here. The pilot boat brings the bow over so he can grab that grab rail when he goes over there. And he's on. Take care, Captain Alex. I'm ready, take care. <laughs> all right. Now, Luke's over here. He's getting it all straight. He's got it all set to go. Pilots away. I can shut down, down the wheelhouse. Okay. I'm just going to leave the AC on. Okay. I'll leave it on. Everything else good up there? You yeah. got the steering on down below, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. All right. I think I'm going to stay up here to give you a better look at things. You can see there's that there's that Caribbean swell we were talking about before. So now Luke is gonna go and loosen up on the wire. And by loosening up on the wire, they can now take the tension off of the bow line. We got him over here. Now he just talked to the chief. The chief responded on the radio and the chief is letting the line go. Tankerman's in position. Tankerman grabs the line, brings it back. And because of the weight of the line, he's very careful to try to make sure he doesn't get it in the water. Just because it gets heavier and harder to pull up on the boat. It doesn't seem like it's that big, but it's about 10 feet down to the water from the edge of the bow. We don't want our chief having to lift all that up. So now Luke is all done. He's all set. You can see some of the sand that has been turned up. And a lot of people say, oh my God, you guys are running the ground. I think it's 50 feet of water or better right here. But what happens is those big engines, when they start backing down, the water hits the back of the hull, uh, the, the forward part of the hull there. The propellers are like this, and when you back, it comes up, it shoots the water at a 45 degree angle right down. All right, so now, Luke is using those, the little pin on the rail there, the hook, to keep the wire from getting in his bits. He's paid out enough slack, so he's backing. The wind is coming from this way, so the barge is staying relatively static. He's paying out a little bit more wire as he sees the wire coming taut. Really nice here that the water is so clear that you can actually see the wire. In most cases, we can't see the wire, and so what we do is we look at the bridle and we see how much tension's on the wire by how much the bridle moves. The bridle being the big chains that go back and forth there, you know. The, and those chains, remember, that's not because it needs all that to, to pull on. It's, it's we're trying to put as much weight there as possible because that weight is actually what will work as a shock absorber for us when we go into seas. All right, now we're looking at the flags. And you can see where the flags are not going straight back. So that means that the barge is blowing, what we call blowing down. So Luke has to spin around really quickly and uh, before the barge goes. And when he does that, he'll be putting more and more pressure on the barge. Now you can see the stern of the barge is coming around. So that's what Luke did was perfect there. He's getting out in front of it right now. Now he's gonna go and catch the donut. And I'm gonna run down below so I can take, there he goes, he just caught the donut. I'm gonna run down below so that I can go and help him in the wheelhouse and uh, take the steering when he's ready. And if anyone thought that was violent, no, that's how it works. That's how you work. Right here is where Luke is really good. He, he brought the wire up without a lot of strain on it. If you get too much strain on it, it's really, oh, and he cut the donut again. He's the man. All right, Luke, I'll, t I'll go up there. When you're ready to give me the steering, I'll be there ready for you. I'm gonna put this over here. Now, I'm going to leave you here to watch your own thing while I take the steering. Well, that's...
that's about it as far as the action goes. Hope you liked this video. If you got anything out of it, you can really help out the channel by giving it, hitting that thumbs up button. Of course, we'd love it if you uh, consider becoming a patron. And, uh, I'll put a link in the description below. Thank you to all the patrons who uh, keep this channel alive. That's awesome. And uh, if you want to buy the crew a drink in the airport when we uh, get off and we're headed home, you can hit that uh, super thanks button. We certainly appreciate it. Thank you so much, and uh, if you get a chance, uh, head over to the uh, over to uh, SV Paquita. I'll put a link in the description for that too. Doing all kinds of fun things over there, and uh, we're going to the boat show in uh, Annapolis. Uh, if you're that would be the sailboat uh, show, not the powerboat sh show. If you're in the Annapolis area and you're going there, make sure you check us out. And uh, we'll be having a meetup and all that kinds of things. Uh, all that information will be on the other channel, SV Paquita. Link in the description. And um, you guys take care, be safe, and I'll see you on the one.